Hi there and welcome back to the uh, Data Lake in a Day series. This is the final episode of the this series, so this is Lab 5. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Power BI as the presentation layer for our data lake. Uh, this is just one example of a presentation layer of what you can use that data for once you get it into the lake. Uh, so in the previous sessions, hopefully you've done those by now, uh, we covered ingesting data from a database on-prem, then we covered getting data from a uh, internet source through an API uh, with a logic app. Uh, then we covered processing that data, uh, ingesting it into the data warehouse. And now finally, we're going to actually present that data uh, to the users. So uh, this is a pretty simple lab in terms of what we're presenting back. So the purpose of this is not to teach you Power BI. There are many, many resources out there for that. This is still to just introduce the concept of a data lake, so don't be surprised that this is a fairly simple report that we're going to be creating. Um, so with that, hope you enjoy the lab. Um, please do click subscribe down below and like if you enjoyed it. Put something in the comments if there's anything else that you'd like to see from me. Uh, as I say, this is the last in this series, but there are other great demos coming up, so look forward to seeing you then. So first to do this uh, demo, we're going to replace the weather data that we've already got on the lake. Now the reason for this is, uh, as in the previous lab, where uh, we created data, we don't need the exact data that we created before. So um, this is a curated data set that's going to include all of the cities that we're looking at uh, in the final lab. Uh, so we're just going to swap out the uh, CSV in this folder, so delete the existing one. That contains the weather from the previous lab that only had, I think, four cities in. And now we're going to upload the file. Um, the link is in the lab notes uh, for this updated version. And now we've got one called weather CSV, which is going to contain all of the uh, weather information that we need. So next, open up Power BI and create a new report. And first thing to do is save it. Uh, I'm saving it to my desktop here calling it DLIAD for data lake in a day. Uh, and periodically as you work, make sure you're saving this uh, just to make sure that you don't lose any, any changes that you've made. So next hit that de get data button and choose Azure Blob Storage. Then we're gonna head over to the Azure portal, open our Blob Storage account, which is our lake in this instance, go to properties and just copy this Blob Service endpoint, which is the URL where we can reach the, the Blob and hit OK. And the next thing we need is the account key. So obviously, although it's a public endpoint, there's no way that somebody could access this without authorization and authentication. So uh, putting the account key in and hitting connect, that then allows us to, to connect on. So we just need the model uh, folder here. This contains our model data that we've uh, created in the previous labs. And we're going to be using almost all of this apart from the detail we're going to get from a SQL DW instance. Uh, so in here, we're going to copy this model and paste it. So what we're copying here is actually just the connection to the data lake um, and the fact that we're opening that model directory. What we're doing now is for each of the CSVs that are in here, cities.csv, etc., we're just going to rename the, uh, the query and drill down into those individual files and make those into individual data sets. This then allows us within Power BI to create the model. So work your way down the list and each one that has an extension. So you, you might sometimes have a customers that doesn't have the extension. That's just metadata that's created by the processing. Um, but the actual CSV is the one that we want here. Um, so literally just use the same names as the files and create each one. And as you'll see in a moment, so when you click on them, you can actually see the data that's in there and then they're going to appear in our data model as individual boxes. So once that's complete, we're now going to create another data set. Uh, so we skipped over the, uh, orders information, um, in the folder. And we're going to go to new source and connect to a Azure SQL data warehouse. So if you're watching this in the future, this will probably be renamed as Synapse, uh, as was launched last October. The actual service has already been renamed. So if you look in here, it says Synapse SQL 
rather than uh, SQL Data Warehouse. And that change is going to be pushed out through all of the products eventually. Uh, so here we're pasting the server and choosing DW01 as the database. Uh, on here, make sure that you're choosing database authentication. When we do these labs in person, probably 90% of the people in the room uh, try with Windows and fail. So it's got to be database authorization. Type in demo god and the password that we've been using all the way through. And then once you connect, select orders. That then uh, shows you a subset of the data. So this is going to be cached so that we can work with it. But uh, because we selected live query on that previous box, uh, we only get new data each time a query is run in Power BI. So it's absolutely live. If anything changes in the data warehouse, that data will be up to date. This also means that we can have a much, much larger model than we would if we had exported that or if we import it into uh, Power BI, there are limits on the size of the data. So next we're going to click on the data uh, tab and create a new table called uh, dates. And in the top there, it was dates equals calendar auto, open bracket, close bracket. That just creates a table with all of the dates that are present in our model. So for each of the orders in this sales model, there's going to be um, a date associated associated with that order. The calendar auto just means that when we have a filter, we can only select dates that are valid for our model. Uh, so it will give us, uh, I think it was 2017, 2018, 2019 in the data that we've got in this lab. Uh, so those will be the only options. If you use just calendar, then by default, it goes all the way back to 1900 uh, and, and quite far into the future. So just gives the, the user too many options. So here we're going to uh, zoom out and drag everything into one central place. Then we're going to go into the orders table and just change the total to a decimal number and currency, quantity to whole number, and the price each to decimal and currency. This just makes sure they display properly in Power BI and that anything we do with them is treated properly as that type of data. Um, and we're also setting the date so that it has uh, YYYY, MMDD format, or whatever your local equivalent is. We don't need the timestamp on, on that um, data. It just makes it look confusing in a report. Uh, and, and this is one of the big things about report writing is to make it easy for the consumer. Uh, so most of your time is going to be spent doing tidying up and things like that. Uh, so now we're just putting together the um, the relationships between these tables. So on the screen here, I'm using drag and drop. You can also use the manage relationships button up on the menu there uh, and do this manually. Uh, but I know that these worked. So I'm just dragging, for instance, item onto item, customer ID onto customer ID. Uh, the cardinality of these is correct. So there are many orders per customer. Uh, there are many customers per city and that kind of thing. Uh, so these are all described as a table in the in the instructions in the lab. So when you're doing this yourself, just go over to the lab, look at that table and make sure yours are the same. So next we're going to do the aggregations. Uh, and here we are effectively saying that uh, when we're looking at the orders table, if we're grouping by city, then we can just look into this aggregated city date table instead. Uh, and that means that we don't have to go to the orders table to get the information. We've already got uh, the count of the number of times that city comes up. We've already got the groupings by city so that we know what orders were made per city. Uh, and this just means that for 99% of the queries that people are going to do in Power BI, we don't need to go back and hit that SQL DW. So this is going to be cheaper. It's going to be faster for the user. And it also means that our model within Power BI is nice and small. So we can use a smaller Power BI instance, but we can still get that snappy um, report that people want to use. So when you're looking at sales report, sales by month almost instantly comes up because it's cached, it's in an aggregated table. But if I wanted to see the detail of what the orders were, then I would be going off to SQL DW where I've got potentially a petabyte of information and I can see the full detail if I want to, but I understand that that's going to take slightly longer for me to get those results because there's more data. Uh, so this is quite a powerful technique uh, to make things faster, cheaper, better. Uh, within our reporting. So once those aggregations are done, uh, we've linked the items and the cities. Those are the main two facts within our data set. 
Uh, we're going to go back into the report designer and add a matrix. And in that matrix, we're going to take city from the cities table, date from the dates table, uh, and then we're going to change that date to just show the date rather than have a hierarchy, uh, just for convenience of, of the demo. Then order ID, so when we drill down, we'll be able to see individual orders on that date for that city. And then under values, we're just going to do the count of items. So how many different items were sold in that city on that date? Pretty straightforward. So at this point, we've not we're just using aggregations, so we can see 116 uh, items were sold in Barbacina. That's coming from our aggregated table of items. But when we drill down, if we go into the uh, query editor for SQL DW, we'll be able to see that only one query has actually hit the database. Uh, so you can see the time that I ran it. And then if I just sort by time, you'll see there's only one at the top there. And if we drill into that, we can actually see the query. I didn't scroll down here for some reason, but you'd be able to see the Barbacina. Um, query just at the bottom of the, the query pane. Uh, so that nicely shows how we're reducing the, the impact on the SQL DW instance, which means we can pay less for it, uh, which is always a good thing on these large solutions. So to add the weather in, we've, we've linked it all up earlier on. We can now just drop the temperature in, change that to average temperature, which means when we drill down, we'll now be able to see the temperature on the date of that order for that city. Um, which shows you how easy it is to kind of merge data sets and, and get more value from something that otherwise didn't have that enrichment. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that lab and uh, the rest of the series before it. If you've not checked out the rest of the series, do uh, go and do that now. Uh, you may also want to have a bit of a browser around the channel. I've got a series a about uh, data DevOps, uh, so automating and governance around data platforms such as this one, uh, so that you can use DevOps techniques to increase your agility, uh, really keep up momentum on, on making changes to this stuff, uh, and doing automated testing and all of that good stuff. I also have a bit of a series about using a Garmin watch for an IoT testing device uh, to send out your heart rate and stuff like that. So please check out the rest of the channel, subscribe if you if you enjoy it. And uh, don't forget, put something in the comments down below about what you'd like to see next coming up on the channel. Thanks very much. I hope to see you next time.